I still can't believe this is how my college life started. It seems crazy, but this is what happened. A few weeks ago, just days into my freshman year, my roommate Tracy and I had some free time before classes started that Monday, so we thought we'd walk around and familiarize ourselves with the school. It was around 7 p.m., and it was not dark yet, but the sun was starting to dip low in the sky. Many students were out and about, enjoying the weather, and some construction guys were still at work, making the most of the cool spell, a rarity in the south in August. Tracy and I decided to map out her schedule. She's a biochemistry major, so we visited this huge science building to find her lecture hall. The first building we entered was the wrong place, so we walked across the lawn to another building, which opened up into this huge auditorium-looking place. It was dead inside, but only because it was 7.30 p.m. during the summer, and the fall semester hadn't officially started yet. The place was a ghost town, eerily silent, except for our footsteps. That silence should have been our first clue to turn back. I wish I had listened. Tracy and I walked around a bit, looking for someone to help us locate the classroom. We stumbled upon this guy in a janitor uniform, sitting near the rear exit door. We figured he knew every room in this massive building, so we walked toward him. He stiffened up when he first saw us. Eyes wide, he walked towards us with these weird, rigid movements. He seemed a little odd to me, but when I glanced over at Tracy, she appeared oblivious to it and began to ask him for directions. The janitor's accent was thick, his eyes never leaving ours, as he pointed us toward another building across the quad. Just then, the door to his left creaks open, revealing another guy in a janitor uniform who, for whatever reason, had crammed himself into this tiny utility closet. There weren't even any lights on in there. I had no idea why he'd be in there with the lights off, but whatever. I looked over at Tracy. This time, she seemed a little unnerved by this guy's sudden appearance. We quickly thanked the guys and left. We followed the janitor's instructions, which seemed to lead us in the right direction. We saw the building and took a left, as he had instructed. I was expecting to see the entrance, but we were heading toward this shady-looking back lot instead. That's when we heard it, a voice, chilling and deep. You lost? Another janitor, if you could call him that, was leaning nonchalantly against a dumpster, smoking a cigarette. The realization hit both Tracy and me at the same time. We were isolated, cut off from the rest of the campus, and it was starting to get dark. Panic set in when we heard the rapid footsteps approaching. With a quick glance over my shoulder, I saw the two guys in janitor uniforms from the other building heading towards us, blocking the path back the way we'd come. I don't recall who took off running first, Tracy or me, but we sprinted along the side of the building, trying every door along the way. All were locked. In the background, I could hear the laughter coming <laughs> from the guy smoking the cigarette. Desperation peaked until we found an unlocked basement door. Relief settled in as we ran up the stairs and entered the hallway just as we heard the guys coming through the basement door. They followed us, their footsteps coming towards us. We hurried down the dark, deserted hallway, desperate to find a way out of the building or anyone or anything that could help us. We found another set of stairs leading to the upper floors. By this point, 
we could still hear the footsteps of these men on the linoleum tiles, the echoes filling the deserted building. We sprinted down the hallway until we found a set of glass doors that was the main entrance, then hightailed it out of there. Dialing campus security, our voices were shaking as we relayed our encounter with the janitors. We waited there until campus security showed up. Their response chilled us to the bone. No janitors were scheduled that evening. The building had been closed all summer for repairs. Empty. Abandoned. I've read horror stories, watched countless movies, but nothing prepares you for when it's you in the crosshairs, heart racing, praying you're just overreacting. But we weren't. Those men, whoever they were, had led us into a trap. For what? My nightmares are filled with answers. I'm questioning everything now. This campus, my safety. This was my first time away from home. I thought I'd find my independence here, but now I'm not sure I'll find my way back to feeling safe. And I'm not sure I want to stay and find out what happens next. When I started my sophomore year of college, I snagged the jackpot of dorm rooms. This solo setup was at the end of the floor, tucked just around a corner. It gave me a little more privacy than the rest of the rooms, since I had my own little section where you had to turn a corner to even see my door. My friends were just a shout away, but at the same time, if I needed quiet time to study or sleep, I had the privacy to do so. About a month into the semester, I'm in my room late one night doing some assigned reading about World War II for my history class. I hear this faint tapping on my door. It was so light that I almost didn't hear it. I yelled, come in! But the door didn't open, so I got up to open it. Nobody was there. I walked down my short corridor and peeked around the corner to look down the hall, but nobody was there either. Figuring one of my friends was playing ding-dong ditch in the dorms, I shrugged it off and continued reading, but I left the door open a crack in case they came back. Nobody did. The following night, a few minutes after turning off the light and getting into bed, I heard the tapping on the door again. Only this time it was much louder, more of a light knocking sound. Who's there? I called out. The knocking stops, but nobody answers. Curious, I got out of bed and quickly opened the door. Nobody was there. I hurry down the short corridor to look down the long hallway. Again, nobody. I was a little freaked out, but I still thought it was one of my friends playing around. The following day, I asked some of the other students in the dorm if they had been messing with me. I got nothing but denials and confused shrugs. I figured it had to be one of them, but what could I do? Later that night, I was woken up by someone knocking on my door. This time, it was not a light tapping or soft knocking. Instead, it was louder than ever. I was almost afraid of even opening the door, but after a brief hesitation, I jumped out of bed and flung it open. Guess what? Nothing. Annoyed, I was done screwing around and ran to the corner to look down the hallway. I was just in time to catch a glimpse of the back of someone disappearing behind the corner at the far end. I ran as fast as I could down the corridor. As I turned right, I saw a door at the end of the hallway shutting. It wasn't another dorm room, it was a bathroom. This is it, I think. Time to face this jokester. I push open the bathroom door with as much bravado as I could muster. But oddly, the bathroom's dark and eerily quiet. I turned on the light, expecting to see someone standing there, but I didn't see anyone. Both bathroom stalls were shut, so I got on my hands and knees and looked under them. I saw a pair of heavy black work boots under one. I took a deep breath and pushed open the stall door. It was a sight so bizarre it took me a moment to process it. The stall was empty. It was just a pair of boots sitting on the floor and nobody there. A burst of creepy, weird laughter filled the room. The kind of laughing I would expect to hear from some crazy old man. But no one who lived in the building was over 25. Not even the RA. The dorm was locked to everyone else at night. By this point, I'm scared shitless. 
I bolted out of there, sprinting back to my room as fast as possible, and locked the door. I hopped back in my bed and started texting every friend I had. No replies. Eventually I calmed down and tried to get to sleep. A couple hours later, the knocking happened again. I ignored it. This went on for about 30 seconds before whoever that person was finally gave up. There was just no way I was going out there again. I spoke to everybody on my floor the next day. Nobody else heard knocking, and everybody swore they weren't pranking me. Everybody seemed sincere, which put me at a loss. Later that day, I braved a closer look around the bathroom. The boots were gone, of course, but as I looked around I realized there were no windows in there, no other ways in or out. Nowhere this person could have been hiding and no way for them to get out. This was not another student. This might be college, but no one in my dorm was that clever. Judging by the boots and the laughing I heard, it was an older man who had somehow found his way into a locked dorm at night seemingly for no other reason than to just knock on my door. To me, this was just way more disturbing. During my junior year at Cornell University, my friends and I used to go out every weekend. One Friday night in early October, when we didn't really have any big plans, me and two of my closest friends decided to hang out near the school's botanic gardens. There was this little clearing on the far side of BB Lake where students would smoke and drink. It was relatively unknown to most of the kids, but it was close to campus, which is why we chose it. That night, we brought a bunch of beers, lit a fire, and just hung out. As the night progressed and the beers kept flowing, one of my friends suddenly went silent. We all perked up and listened as we heard the soft crunching of leaves and branches somewhere behind us in the woods almost as if someone was trying to be sneaky. Slowly and steadily, the footsteps were coming closer. We threw our open bottles in the lake since we were all under 21, and it wasn't unheard of for campus police to roam the woods on weekends to catch kids drinking and smoking pot. We tucked the rest of the beers into a backpack I had brought because that seemed logical while moderately drunk and slightly stoned. My paranoia was higher than usual. That was probably the case for all of us. But as the sounds continued, there came a deliberate pacing that felt all too intentional. It wasn't campus police, and it wasn't other students looking for a place to party. This was something else. There wasn't any way we could hide since the fire pretty much exposed us to anyone coming this way. Suddenly the sound of a tree branch snapping, much too close, freaked all of us out. None of us were really the confrontational type so we were lacking that one person who would have the confidence to stand up and yell out to whoever was out there. Instead, we all just sat in silence, shushing each other, our minds spiraling into worst-case scenarios. The someone or something out there seemed to be circling us. Cracking tree branches and leaves crunching on the ground kept echoing over to our campsite. The pot and the beer should have had us chuckling, but we were all pretty terrified of who or what it could be. Then, without warning, a branch hurtled through the air, landing with a thud in the center of our little campfire. Chaos immediately ensued. One of my two friends jumped up and, without a word, took off running while my other friend and I sat behind, looking at each other nervous. We didn't know yet if this was a joke or not. Then, another branch flew from the darkness, striking my friend in the head with a sickening thud. I grabbed my backpack hurled my friend up off the ground, and ran as fast as we could toward campus. When we hit the Sackett footbridge, which separated the gardens from the dorms, we stopped to catch our breaths. We thought we were safe. We were not. We heard footsteps thrashing through the leaves towards us. A tall figure soon emerged from the trees and stopped at the top of the steps leading down to the bridge. It looked like Slenderman, which I know is insane, but that's what he looked like. We took off running again, his footsteps echoing on the stone bridge that crossed over the narrow part of BB Lake. We didn't stop again until we made it back to the dorm. We sat in my room, adrenaline turning into relief, which turned into laughing as we finished off the rest of the beers. That stopped when, periodically looking out the window, we soon saw a figure emerge from the woods and walk across the lawn toward our dorm. It was too far to see his features, but he looked tall and thin 
the same build as the figure we saw on the other side of the bridge. We lost sight of him in the darkness. A few minutes later, there was a pounding on the door, and I could see the doorknob being twisted back and forth. We nearly jumped out of our skins, but it was our other friend who had taken off running at the first sign of trouble. We laughed it off, nervous and unsettled, while we finished our beers. It wasn't until the next morning that we realized how terrifying that experience actually was. From that night on, we never went back to the botanic gardens at night. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.